Packers, everyday center fielder, leadoff man. Had a lot of fantasy potential in that role after putting up a 714 OPS and 29 steals over 129 games last year. But he was dropped to the ninth spot in the order by the beginning of June. And on Tuesday, the Rangers demoted him to AAA Round Rock. Um, the Shields you know, does have 18 stolen bases and 21 attempts this year. He's played good defense, but he's batting just 204 with a 570 OPS and 322 plate appearances. Been one of the least um, effective performers in the majors, offensively at least. Um, so I, uh, the Rangers, I think this is about kind of jump-starting his career and, and just hoping he gets right on the farm and maybe finishes strong with a, a good final four or five weeks in the majors and you know has some momentum carrying into the 2019 season. Carlos Tochi uh, will start in center field for Texas while the Shields works on his game at AAA. Tochi's not a fantasy relevant player batting just 152 with a 430 OPS through his first 33 major league games never showed much of an offensive uh, skill set in the minors so uh, n- nothing really here to react to I'm a little surprised the Rangers did that move but you know they're not playing for anything this year and and you know just they're just trying to gear up for next year Willie Calhoun is up in the majors which is yep. cool uh, sure. Hit a homer the other day. Hasn't shown much power in the minors this year, which is a little concerning. But uh, he's basically hitting like 350 in July, so they really had to just call him up. I don't know how you know how much he's going to play, um, especially if uh, Shinsu Chu doesn't get traded by the deadline. Um, he might get squeezed out of playing time there. But you know, I'm still interested in Calhoun anyway in, in mixed leagues. Um, just a random thing here. I put, uh, we mentioned Eloy, Eloy Jimenez earlier, White Sox outfield prospect. I put him in waiver wide on Thursday. And honestly, I have no idea if he's getting called up this year, but I think he deserves it on merit. These numbers in AAA are, are really something else. He's hitting 351 with five homers in 20 games since his promotion last month. And maybe most impressive of all, he's only struck out seven times in 80 plate appearances. So that's really nice to see, or at least refreshing, given the way that the game's being played right now. Uh, Jimenez is batting 326 with 15 homers and a 950 OPS in 73 games this year between AA and AAA. I don't know how much more he has to prove in the minors, honestly. Um, you know, the White Sox, of course, have the service time considerations to, to keep in mind. Maybe they even wait until a couple of weeks into next season, but. I don't think they can ignore his performance in the minors for much longer, or at least try to justify it. So I think if you're in a deeper mixed league and he's still out there, and I think Jimenez is still available in over 80% of Yahoo leagues, and he's a pretty good upside stash for the for the stretch run. Just because we were saying earlier, like outfielders are kind of so replaceable that the guy that you're dropping probably to pick up Jimenez is someone you could easily get later on or someone yeah. comparable in value. So uh, someone with as much upside as Jimenez, I think, is worth stashing away, just on the chance he's called up. And then some positive Cardinals news, of, of which there isn't a whole lot right now. Yeah. Um, Daniel Ponce de Leon threw seven no-hit innings in his Major League debut on Monday night against the Reds before getting lifted with a pitch count of 116. The Cardinals actually wound up losing that game. Uh, Jordan Hicks allowed the Reds' first hit in the eighth, and then Bud Norris blew the save in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, but, you know, about Ponce de Leon, it's a, a really nice comeback story. He got hit in the head by a comebacker last May at, at AAA Memphis, needed emergency surgery to remove pressure on his brain, spent weeks in the hospital, uh, but apparently looked really good this spring in Cardinals camp and has posted a 2.15 ERA and 103 strikeouts in 92 innings this season at the AAA level. Actually got optioned back to AAA after Monday's brilliant debut, but uh, we'll see him again soon especially if the Cardinals sell some parts at the deadline. There's talk of Carlos Martinez, maybe Miles Michaelis. Um, so Ponce de Leon, a guy to keep in mind, could be worth rostering in mixed leagues down the stretch or, or at least streaming if he gets another spot start or something. And then the night after Ponce de Leon went seven no-hit innings, Cardinals left-hander Austin Gomber carried a no-hitter into the bottom of the seventh before allowing a one-out single to Joey Votto. It it was the first career major league start for Gomber, but he had made 15 appearances out of the Cardinals' bullpen earlier this year. Overall, the rookie has a 3.48 ERA, 1.11 whip, and 16 strikeouts over his first 20 and two-thirds major league innings. He's posted really good numbers all all throughout the minors. 
looks like his next start will come Monday at home against the Rockies. There's there's talk of Carlos Martinez returning from the disabled list for that one. He's dealing with a, a minor oblique strain. At this point, if I'm the Cardinals, I would just make sure Martinez is healthy. This is his second time dealing with an oblique strain. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I think either way, there, there's a decent chance we see a lot more Gomber starts down the stretch. Currently owned in just 1% of Yahoo leagues. Um, has really good stuff. So I know we, we do starting pitcher streamers to finish out this podcast. Uh, and I was busy writing up a bunch of trades this afternoon. So Gomber is mine. Okay, I had one question about the Cardinals. I saw Dakota Hudson was pulled from a start early on Wednesday night. Um, is there any significance to that in the minors? And he was like getting hugs in the dugout from like teammates and stuff. Is there anything to that? I, I didn't see a follow up uh, to what was going on there. I, I'm, I'm guessing he's getting called up, uh, okay. but I don't know. I, I think he'll probably pitch out of the bullpen initially because the Cardinals just have so many options. John Gant is one too. Right. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I haven't heard any follow up from that. But someone, to, I guess, to keep an eye on, maybe in a deeper league. Yeah, Dakota Hudson's uh, one of one of their best pitching prospects. Yeah. I mean, I, I would even put him up there with like Alex Reyes at this point with with what Reyes has dealt with. Mm-hmm. Uh, last note for me: the Mets finally called up Jeff McNeil this week. I, I think I mentioned him a couple of weeks back. He's just been tearing things up in the minors all year. He was hitting three forty two with nineteen homers, OPS north of a thousand in eighty eight games between Double A AA and Triple A. The thing about him is that he had just nine homers over his first 338 professional games, so this was really unexpected. Uh, McNeil's 26 years old, so he's not your average prospect. He's also missed a lot of time with injury uh, in recent seasons, so he's changed his swing a little bit. He's put on a little more weight and muscle since the early part of his pro career, so he's sort of a tough player to get a read on at this point. Still, I think that's one advantage to where the Mets are right now and that they can give him a shot and see what they have with him. And I think there will be some opportunities here as Drupal Cabrera is likely to be traded. Wilmer Flores could potentially be moved. Jose Reyes is still somehow on the roster, but he really shouldn't be blocking anyone, especially someone like McNeil, who they're trying to to figure out what they have. So uh, I'm really interested to watch him. Uh, And I think if you're in a deeper mix league, uh, you know, he can make a lot of sense as a pickup, assuming the playing time's there. Uh, I'm just really interested to see if the power's for real. Uh, has a good approach at the plate, too, can hit for average. So, you know, we'll see what happens with him. Uh, with the Mets selling off pieces, I think he's going to play quite a bit. Um, so streaming option for me, speaking of the Mets, I have Joe Musgrove uh, with the Pirates. He's going up against the Mets on Sunday. Of course, the Pirates have been awesome recently. Uh, and this should be pretty self-explanatory. The Mets offense is bad. Could get even worse if they end up trading Cabrera. Brandon Nimmo has been really struggling recently. Uh, Musgrove looked really good Tuesday against the Indians. He's thrown at least seven innings in three out of his last four starts. I think he stands a good chance to do it again in this one. And he's still out there in, I believe, 75% of Yahoo leagues or something like that. That's way too many. So I think he's worth scooping up, not only as a as a streaming option, but for someone to keep on your roster basically down the stretch. Yeah, um, yeah. Austin Gomber is my streamer, <laughs> just because I didn't have time to come up with one. All good. Um, I I do want to note that uh, the Angels are are shopping Blake Parker. It sounds like, and I, and I would imagine they're going to deal him. They already dealt Martin Maldonado, so they're they're moving right into sell mode. and And I think Justin Anderson is is a pretty good stash. He's been really good lately. Um, got a little chance out of the Angels closer role earlier this year, and I think he's probably their closer of the future. So, yeah, I think he's a pretty good stash in deeper mixed leagues with with the with the, a good chance that. Blake Parker gets dealt at some point over the next few days. There were a couple of reports this afternoon about the Cubs and Cole Hamels. Um, we'll yeah. see if that comes together. I think, you know, Hamels has really gone downhill over the past month or so. Um, but, I mean, I guess he would be an improvement over Tyler Chatwood. I think anybody would be. <laughs> so I, I, I think now Chatwood has more walks than strikeouts this season. So, yep. uh, you know, we're keeping track of that here. Uh, uh, anything else before we go? No, that's it. All right. So that will do it for this week. If you like what you're hearing with this show, make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, etc. And please rate and review if you get the chance. We'd really appreciate it. Follow us on Twitter if you don't already. I'm at DJ Short. Drew is at Drew Silve. And we'll see you next time.